So yeah, this is what you're greeted by when you start the game. I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh, majestic. Now that you know how to set up Reloaded 2 to launch the game with mods, maybe you're curious about how to create one from scratch, so in this guide, I'll explain how to do exactly that. We'll be covering how to extract data from P5R and how to structure it so that you can run it as a brand new Reloaded 2 mod. So remember how in the previous video you could right click the game in Steam, go to manage, and browse local files? Well, if you go into the CPK folder here, you'll see that we have a few massive files in there. So if I had to explain how this works, each of these CPKs is basically treated as the root of the game's file system. So what that means is, they're basically folders. So for instance, everything inside this base CPK and everything inside this EN CPK is treated like they're both one giant folder. So the base CPK is going to contain files that are the same for every single region no matter what, and EN is going to be like English localized stuff. So what does this mean for creating mods? Well, if you take a look at this Comic Sans mod that we downloaded before, Inside that we have this P5R Essentials folder, and then inside that there's a CPK folder. Now the CPK folder kind of mimics that CPK folder that's next to the EXE, the one that contains the EN and the base and all that. Inside that we have a folder named Mod CPK. Now if you look, there isn't a CPK file named that, it's just a completely made up name. It turns out you can name this whatever you want and anything inside it will override whatever files are in any of the CPKs. And once you go inside there you'll see this font folder and that's where it starts to actually mimic the layout of the inside of the CPKs. So once these are extracted, which I'll talk about how to do that later, if you go into this EN CPK, because it's the English localized files it would have its own font folder, right? So you go in there. And sure enough, that's what the mod replaces. It's in the same exact spot, so the game knows to load this instead of whatever is inside of the CPK. And that's exactly what we're going to try to do in a second, but instead of making a font mod, we're going to try to swap two models around so that you're playing as someone other than Joker. Because that's a pretty fun way to experiment, right? If you want to create your own separate mod and have it in this mods list, you just go to the second button on the left and reloaded and you click on this new button right here and this will come up and it'll ask for an ID. If you look at the mods list you'll see each mod kind of has its own ID. It's standard practice to start it with P5R PC and then a dot just to keep it organized from different games. So I'm going to type P5R PC dot test mod since we're just testing we don't really know what we're doing yet. For the name, test mod, author, shrine fox, version, 1.0 and then you can describe what the mod does. Uh, I'll just say just testing stuff for now. Uh, you don't have to put a website or any of this. Mod dependencies, well we only really need to put Persona Essentials since that's what we're going to be using to replace the CPK files. You don't really need to worry about anything else that pops up since we're not distributing the mod yet so just choose p5r.exe if you can find it in the list. You can enable the mod, but it doesn't do anything if you run it yet, and that's because if you right click it and choose open folder, you'll see the folder is empty. There's nothing in it except this modconfig.json. If you look at that in notepad, you'll see this is just all the info that we entered. So this file being here pretty much just tells Reloaded like, hey, this is a P5R mod, so show it in the list. So before we can start changing the files, we need to have access to them, right? To get the files out of these CPKs, we're going to go into our internet browser and type in cryfs v2 libgy. And it should bring us to this GitHub page. Uh, don't go to the wrong one. We need the one that doesn't say reloaded. It just says cryfs v2 lib. And go to the releases tab, as usual, and download cryfs libgy.zip. And just like all our other tools, I'm going to extract this to our tools folder and then I'll run the exe. And of course, once you run it, you also need another .NET framework, because why not? This process is the exact same as in the previous video, so yeah, you just 
wait for the exe to download and then you run it and you install everything once you have that installed this should just open right up when you run the exe and all you have to do is drag one of the cpks over onto this window here i'm doing base cpk for now and now every single file in the cpk is listed here it's 45,000 of them which, as you can imagine, you're going to need a lot of space to extract all these. It says 63 gigabytes of free space is going to be needed. If you have that to work with, then okay. But if you want to, you can still just kind of search for files by name, and it'll narrow down whichever ones contain that name. So here are some files involving the title screen. Or you can search for an extension like .dds, it'll show you every dds file that's in the CPK. So if you need to look for a specific file, that kind of works. But I do recommend just right-clicking and choosing Extract All if you have the space for it, because it'll be a lot easier for us to navigate and make sense of than looking at this list. I've already done that, but I'm just showing you how you would do it, because otherwise you would have to select individual files and then choose Extract Selected instead of Extract All. Uh, you can choose multiple of them by holding down Control and clicking on them, or you can hold shift to like select a whole range of them at once. It's up to you how to do this, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to assume that you extracted them all at once somewhere. So now that we have that, I'm going to go to our mods folder, and our goal right now is to replace one of these files in the CPK using our mod, so let's pick one. Let's just say that for our mod, we want to replace this GMD right here. First, we have to right click and make a new folder in our mod and we can name it p5r essentials once you have that go inside and create another folder this one's going to be called just cpk and inside that is that folder that can be named literally whatever you want so i'm typing whatever.cpk and here is where we have to start mimicking the cpk layout inside the base cpk that i've extracted there is a model folder and that just has all of the models for characters and whatnot. Inside there you see there's this character folder and inside of that we have all these numbered folders and these each represent a character. So the very first one is the protagonist. The second one here is the school uniform that he wears most of the time. That one just makes the most sense to test with. So we want to mimic the path that leads up to that file inside of our mod. We've got model, character, and then 0001. We have to create each of those folders, and they're going to be kind of nested. So we start with model, if I can type here, and then character, and then 0001. And make sure that you typed all these exactly the same, because if there's any typos, it won't load. And now you can pretty much just copy whatever GMD file that you want inside there. I'm going to go to the 03 folder instead. This is Morgana's folder. And by the way, if you go to my website, you can check out the wiki here. And that's going to have a bunch of helpful file lists. So if you go to this page here, you'll see a list of like which model file is which. So we know that this very first file with all the zeros here is the normal cat model for Morgana. So that would be pretty funny probably in Joker's place. So let's copy that. And then we can paste it into our mod folder for Joker. But we're not done yet. We have to actually change the name so that it matches that one Joker model that we want to replace. I'm just going to change the name here so that 3 turns into a 1 and then that 0 turns into a 2. So now the model name matches. And we're pretty much ready at this point to test out the mod, but just as a quick rundown, you go into your mod folder and you should see p5r essentials, cpk, whatever.cpk, model, character, 0001. So yeah, double check for any typos, and then go ahead and launch the game. And this is what we're greeted by. Majestic. I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh... This is what I mean, so no matter how different the character model is, usually it'll still just work. Hilarious. But the proportions will stretch out like this. It's not very hard to pull off, you just have to put things in the right place. 
Another thing that might help you out is if you go to this Cry File System V2 hook mod here, and you choose Configure Mod, you can enable all of these little checkboxes. When you launch the game again, and you look at that other window that pops up with the game, it's going to list all of the files as they're being accessed. Right here, when I load into the classroom, it's showing you all of the characters that are loaded, as well as like some of the school geometry and stuff like that. To make it easier to go through this, you can actually click somewhere in the window and press Ctrl A to select everything. Then press Ctrl C and go to Notepad and press Ctrl V to paste what you have. And now at this point, you can press Ctrl F to search. It'll show us that the last thing that loaded was this 002 model. So that's what I was talking about. That's Joker's like school uniform. Okay, here's an example. Right here you can see that it's loading character 1, model 61. That's the tracksuit for Joker. So if we want that to be Morgana 2, we can just copy and paste that same Morgana model and change the ID to be 61 instead of 2. And also make sure you get rid of where it says copy at the end. And yeah, once that matches up, just reload the game. We should see Morgana in all of his weird, stretchy glory. Yep, look at that stance. Just look at that form. That's crazy. Imagine playing the whole game like this. Like, you technically could if you replaced all of the models. There's really nothing stopping you from doing that. It's just look how insane it is. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, I think that covers just about everything for this video. For the next few topics I'll talk about, it'll be stuff like editing various file formats such as sprites, sound, music. Thanks for watching, I hope this helped you, and I look forward to seeing whatever abominations that you can create.